Uh, yeah, fast but proper segment, Andy. That's the key here. If you were inspired by the thousands of people hitting the streets for the Calgary Marathon uh, this past Sunday, then you want to listen to this guy. This is fitness coach Rich Hesketh on today talking about proper running technique. And you were saying that you watch any pathway, any kind of sidewalk, and you see people running, you see lots of good and lots of bad. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. And, and I think the biggest thing is, is doing it properly, but correcting those things that are you're making mistakes on. Sure. So most of the areas that I find people make mistakes, is based from the rib cage to the knee. Sure. So it comes from the hips okay. and it comes from the core. Okay. So you'll see areas where when people are running, either their hands cross their body and the, you get this rotational. Oh, they're kind of doing the, well, you the think, wiggle, right? Well, think of it, your running is linear. Yeah. So I think the more efficient you can be going in that direction, the more efficient you'll be. So you'll see shoulders kind of rocking side to side or yeah. things twisting. Yeah. The other thing, if you look from here to here, is the movement of the leg. Ah. So if there's external rotation, if you're not lifting like, like straight, kind of a whipping out, yeah, that's okay, this, yeah, this kind of this kind of flare out this way, yeah. or flare in, yeah. that that takes a lot of pressure on your knees when yeah, you no make kidding. contact. So that's a glute knee uh, deficiency. Yeah. So with that, you need to do some things first to activate that first. Okay. So in those simple things you now, do when in your you, warm up, when you say activate, what do you mean? This is part of your warm up. Part before of your warm up. You okay, that's right. Yeah. So make sure this is taken care of first. So a couple of easy warm drills. When you do those leg swings yeah. that you see people do, yeah, of course, right. make sure you're not collapsing at the hip. Ah, so as you're okay. doing it, it's just stretch hamstring, stretch hip flexor, stretch hamstring, stretch hip flexor. Yeah, your flexor. upper body's really quiet, calm, right? Yeah. Very calm and yeah. quiet, so there's not a lot of this going on yeah. or hip movement. Okay. The other thing is to simply put yourself into a position, into a squat position, activate your glute medius by feeling like you're turning your feet out without turning your feet out, oh, and just walk and walk and walk so you're keeping pressure like you're screwing your feet into the ground okay like turning them out but you're not and then you walk and walk so you're activating the glute knees yeah. which will control this kind of movement okay then once you've done that then we take everything linear okay so we take everything into a, a simple a march yeah or a skip so an a is when you lift your knee and put it down okay so it's here and down here and down here and down but if you look at the foot contact your foot needs to come down directly below your hip. You're saying that a lot of people do the heel or they do the toe, like the well, toe? Yeah, yeah. so the, the, the talk is heel striker or toe striker, yeah. when in reality, it should be a full foot or four foot strike. Okay. So you pick your foot up and actively put it down below your hip. Okay. Rather than contacting here, blocking your hip progress and then waiting for your foot to come here. If you contact with your heel, you're actually stopping. That's correct. Your progress. So your efficiency is decreased, yeah, your yeah. time decreases and it's hard on your knees and yeah, ankles. Yeah. Okay, so by doing that, either striking here or shearing force with a toe strike, yeah. you've lost a ton of efficiency. So the idea is that you actively put your foot below your hip and have as little movement from here to here as possible so that if you're gonna be filmed from here to here, you watch the good guys, the really There's marathon runners, they're just like yeah. gliding on air. Yeah. So I'll come back and show you sure, a couple sure, of things. Sure. So if you're looking at a heel strike or a toe strike, you're gonna see a lot of bobbing. Okay. Or a lot of turning. Yeah. Because you're blocking. If you're looking to actively put your foot below you, you wanna be actively putting it down. Yeah. So the efficiency, your contact time on the ground has decreased. Yeah. You're not spending as much time here to here and then pushing off. When, when you're running, and uh, runners will know this at home, like when you're running, how do you mentally remind yourself? Like, do you have like a thought process? That well, you... that's part of the drills. Okay. So when you're doing, when you get into doing a, these as preliminary warm-up drills, yeah. I'm linear here, or you're doing a B where you actively pull your foot to the ground. Yeah. These like a, are all, like a horse kick, right? Yeah, yeah, these are all neuromuscular reminders. Okay. So that when you get out and doing it and when you're getting tired, it comes naturally. Yeah. So it's when you're doing the warm-up portion that you can do the preparatory work to lay the ground for the neuromuscular patterns that you'll never lose. Yeah. So that when you go out and run, it just happens naturally. So you warm up your muscles and your brain. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Absolutely. Uh, if people want to find out more about you, Rich, how do they do that? Well, go to richhesketh.com. We're doing an upgrade on my, my website, so there'll be a little more information on it. Any of the shows that I've done are here as well, yeah. on there. So um, we're going we're gonna to jazz that up and make it a little nicer. Very cool. Fitness coach Rich Hesketh. Check it out. The guy knows what he's talking about.